All right, let's go ahead and create our first Flexbox container in this lecture. Now, before we get started, now the good message is there's no setup involved for using Flexbox by itself. It's just part of CSS by now, but for the purposes of this course, I set up a basic project for you that you can use so that you don't have to worry about any of the HTML or basic CSS and can just start implementing and using Flexbox right away. So check out the resources right now. There's a small zip file there. Just unzip it into your project directory and then open up that folder in your favorite code editor. I personally am going to use Sublime Text in this course, but you can use any other editor that you want. All right, so once you have this set up, just like me here, we can start and now create our first Flexbox container. So let's go ahead and create a div element or a section element in HTML5 and add a class called container. And then I'm going to add four just example elements to it that we can then style using Flexbox. So for now, as you can see, I uh, included the basic styles that you also know from the showcase, which are in this base CSS file. So this is where the linear gradient comes from and all those styles you know from the showcase before, so that you also know what your actual elements look like, what width they have, what height they have, and so on, because they have this semi-transparent background here. And that's all in the base CSS file here. You can take a look if you want to. There are just some basic classes that you can use if you want and some basic styles for some of the elements you might use. Now for your own styles, there's a main CSS file here. So we can basically close this up and not make any changes to the base CSS file. And instead, we're going to use the main CSS file here for our own styles. All right, so as you can see right now, we're not using any Flexbox styles at all. So we just have four divs here and a container class now in the base CSS file, there's, there's no Flexbox properties or anything like that for the container class. So right now, there are only styles like the background and so on. So what you see here in the browser are just four elements, four divs that have display block by default. So they are aligned like this as you're probably used to. So let's now go ahead in a modern browser. I'm going to repeat that for the local development. I'm going to recommend you use Chrome or Firefox browser like that and then to support other browsers you can then use prefixing using a tool online for example. So for now all we have to do to make this work is to add display flex to our container here and let me actually get rid of all the prefixing because I don't need this for my current Chrome browser and I'm going to add that later again as I mentioned using some other tools. So now you can see that this made a great change to our layout actually and it looks a bit like as if those elements, those diffs were floated to the left. Now the float property is not involved here at all, but this is also the default behavior in a flex container. So by default, our flex container is going to align all the elements we give it in a row here, and it's just going to fill that row from the left side. Now we can change all of that using other Flexbox properties, and we're going to discuss all of those in the following lectures. But for now, I just want you to see how easy it is to set up. And then also we're going to see that we have great flexibility here and a lot of powerful properties we can use on flex containers to lay out our elements in various ways and very easily, like for example, vertical centering, as I mentioned, and many other things. Okay, so for this lecture, I just wanted to get you to set up the project, write your first lines of code. And now we're going to take a step back and discuss some more about the principles of Flexbox before we actually dive in and look at all the properties we have and all the power actually we get from the Flexbox specification. So that's it for this lecture. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.